Hey guys, Jungle Explorer here with another trail camera review. This time I'm going to be reviewing the Victor HC 300 trail cam. It's a 20 megapixel trail cam sent to me by the Victor company to test out and review for you. And let me break it out of the box here. Alright, now I've already had this out of the box for you and I've had it out in the field testing it. So I'm just going to show you how it comes in the box. Of course, it has some plastics and stuff on it. Um, it comes with a strap, nylon strap, and a nice little security mounting hardware here that you can mount to the wall or a tree or something and a USB cord. And of course, the, the user manual and all that stuff. But uh, you know, it has, it has that, those things there. Okay, so let me open it up for you. Show you how it opens up. All right. And, you know, these things are pretty easy to program. This one, you know, is just about as easy as any all the rest of them. The only unique thing about it is the battery compartment. This is pretty unique. I have not seen this battery compartment before. Uh, it, uh, it opens up like that. You slide your batteries in and you put them over like that. So, all right guys, so I'm gonna jump right into the stats that I gathered over the last 12 days. If that's of no interest to you and you wanna jump straight to the images and the video samples, I'll throw the number right up here for you so that you can see that. All right, so here are the settings that I put it out in the field with. I had it set to take three photos and one one minute video every 30 minutes as as actuated or as the, it was the sensor detected something to move so there's a, a minimum of a 30 minute time delay between potential videos and images uh, all batteries were tested put it in that I put into the camera at starting out at 1.62 volts okay um, at the end of the 12 days I took the uh, camera out of the field and I it had 271 images on it 88 videos for a total data size of 12.3 gigabytes, all right? Now, each image size, the image size varied from uh, nighttime to daytime. Nighttime images are going to be a little bit smaller than daytime images simply because it's dark and there's not as much data to them. So nighttime images were around 1.3 megabytes. Uh, daytime images were around one, uh, 2.7 megabytes because there's a lot more color and detail in daytime images. Okay, videos were pretty much all very close to the same size and the average uh, per second megabytes for, for videos was 2.3 megabytes per second on average. After I took it out of the field, I tested all the batteries and they were almost identical in voltage and they were all about 1.46 volts was remaining after the 12 days and the uh, all the images and, and pictures and videos that it took. Okay, so now I'm going to show you some images. So I want to throw the first image up here, and what you have here is um, what I call the bright day shot. And, you know, this is the best possible image you're going to get because it's bright day, has all the light there. Now, there's something in this image that you're probably not seeing. There's actually a bobcat in this image. See if you can find it. Okay, it's there. There's an actual full-grown bobcat in this image. Okay, I'll put a little arrow there to show you right where it's at. Okay, you can barely see it. It was coming through the grass. All right, so it is there. I don't think the camera detected the bobcat. It was very windy that day that it took the image, so uh, it probably was the wind that set the grass off, and it just happened to have the bobcat in it. But that was pretty cool, and I'm going to show you a video of that later. Okay, so the next image here is... A late afternoon image and you have a boar hog coming in uh, from there to the, to the feeder and that's just that's after you know just before dark after sunset the infrared lights have turned on okay so here is a, a early morning image with some uh, deer coming into the feeder there uh, here is a, a late afternoon uh, picture with some deer coming into the feeder that uh, it's not turned the IR, the infrared lights on. And here is a nighttime shot of a buck at the feeder. So you can look at that there. Okay, so that kind of gives you a bright day, uh, early morning, late afternoon, and then nighttime images. 
All right, now let's go to videos. Here is the bright day video, and now you're going to see the bobcat walking out there. Okay, uh, pretty cool. Like, <laughs> first time I've caught a bobcat in the daytime. All right, now here is the uh, early morning video of the deer at the feeder. And here is a nighttime video of a boar hog at the, video, at the feeder. Okay, and here is a, a, a video of the buck at the feeder. Okay. And here is a video of the boar hog in the late afternoon. Okay, so you saw all those samples that give you an idea of what it um, looks like and everything. So let me go ahead and talk about what I like and, uh, you know, the pros and cons. This camera did well. It performed good. It, it had a very good detection rate. Um, battery usage was within was decent. Remember, I had it filming one minute videos. Okay, so that's long videos. It took 88 of those. So that's that's you know hour and a half of video there. And um, you know so and especially at nighttime to keep them infrared lights on for one full minute because it has to use them. That's what drains most of the power out of the cameras uh, is those infrared lights. That's what takes up the power. So it did really good for what I had it doing for the time that I did. Uh, it didn't have a lot of false positives. There was some excessive wind and the grass in the background did set it off a few times, but we have had a lot of wind. In fact, we're in like a windstorm right now. You may hear something knock because my things outside my house are blowing over. So um, you may hear that. But anyways, um, overall quality of the images was acceptable. Um, you know, acceptable to decent. I wouldn't say that it's the best images I've seen out of a camera, but they're perfectly usable. Um, videos were also about the same as the images. They were good. Vid image size and video size were within the standard norms for these things for these cameras. Nighttime videos could be a little bit better. They they seem to be kind of sharpened, but um, they were almost like a haze was occurring of some kind. So uh, it wasn't like a, a there was needed a little more contrast in the nighttime videos. But the one thing that I personally it's a, it's not a con. It's a design factor. Uh, this is another one of those zoom cameras. I've talked about that before, where you have your wide angle cameras and then you have your more narrow ang angle cameras. And it seems like a lot of the trail cams are going towards the narrow angle, the more close up shot. Um, and that works pretty good because you can get a closer in shot of what you want to see and you can maybe count the points on a deer rack or something like that. But personally for me, I would prefer the more wide angle. Um, and so for me, that's this, I just really, uh, I've been getting a lot of these narrow angle camera cameras and and I'm wondering why the industry is going that way because it seems like the more newer cameras I get they're all narrow angle um, now on this one here um, the there's two ways to accomplish a narrow angle shot one is to actually put in a lens that is a narrow angle lens and the other is by using digital cropping to crop out an area of the video I'm almost going to guess that this is narrow angle accomplished by digital cropping because it does seem that I'm seeing some graininess in the raw images and stuff that would uh, occur because of a digital crop rather than an actual wide angle lens. Now that could be sensor related and it could have a narrow angle lens. That's just a guess on my, my part. At the end of the day, the camera performed well. Um, it's pretty easy to operate. Um, you know, it has a standard, the uh, standard double clips here. One positive note is that it does take the full size SD card. Okay, it takes a full size SD card here instead of the micro SD card, but it's a little close to that right there. So when you get it out, there's like no way to grab it, and I have to kind of work it out here. I cannot get a hold of it. Now I have big fingers. I have to kind of move around here and get my fingers and try to pull it out. So it's it's I like that the card goes in the side, and I like the full size SD card. 
What I don't like is it, it just they've got it really close in here to the edge and you can't get your fingers in there around it to get get a hold of it. So you might need a pair of pliers or you got to have some fingernails or something to get it out. But I do like that it uses the full size SD card and that it's not stuck in the bottom like most cameras, it's stuck in the side. So I'm going to rate that as a plus for this camera on design. Uh, the case seems good. I'm not really sure how I feel about this thing right here. I'm just really worried about this little latch here. It, it seems durable, you know, um, but it's plastic, you know, with time and one wrong move, you could break that, then you'd it'd be difficult to fix, uh, you know, and then you've got your tripod mount screw right here in the bottom that's in the actual door here. Uh, there's a lot going on for this right here. I, I worry about the longevity of it. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not broken, and of course, in my test, and it has done just fine. But uh, it's just like I said. There's, I think I'm not real in love with this battery design here, the battery case design here. I mean, it's not bad, and it works, but uh, we're not real, real fond of that. Um, you know, has a standard. All the other things right there, are standard, and your standard uh, sensor right there. Aside from that, it's, it's a cool looking camera, nice camo, dark, matches, you know, melds into the uh, the, the background pretty good, um, and it did a good job. So, not much to say else to say about it. It it's did what it was supposed to do. It took decent images and video quality, plenty good enough to tell what animals were and everything like that. Um, it's a narrow angle camera. Not my preference, but some people may may like that. Other than that, I, I really don't have any complaints about it. About the only thing is it's kind of difficult to, for me with my big fingers to grab hold of this card and get it out. But it does have the big side mounted card. So, alright guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you have. Remember, I will place a link to this product in the description of the video. Just click on the show more and it's there. And below that, we'll have my social media links if you want to connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I hope to see you there. And until next time, this is the Jungle Explorer signing out.